Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist, here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. You're in the right place if you're an agent, a broker owner, a team leader, and you're looking to work smarter and not harder, and you're looking to increase your average sale price of a home you represent. So I'm excited, rejuvenated, been going to all these big conferences uh, this summer, and I can tell you there's some exciting times and there's a lot of uncertainty within our industry. And again, Luxury Listing Specials podcast, we have other you know experts from within the industry, sometimes outside the industry, sharing best practices, and we try to fill some voids to both the agents and broker owners so that they can just do that, attract more high-end and luxury clientele, whether it be buyers or sellers. And again, the name of the podcast is Luxury Listing Specialist. However, we love working with high-end buyers. We're, we believe just like Kevin Costner in the Field of Dreams, if you build the listing inventory, the buyers will come. So before I get into today's uh, guest and today's topic, um, just a couple uh, reminders. One, if you haven't done so and you're getting content and, and great value from our podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Two, if you've if you purchased our book, Luxury Listing Specials, on Amazon, again, we could use reviews. That would be awesome. And check out our YouTube channel, Marketing Luxury Group. We produce some great content out there for agents. Subscribe. There's some really great stuff out there. And uh, so a couple things. Uh, on an upcoming episode, uh, we are going to be talking about how there's a lot of downward pressure on commissions. I was at the Inman Conference in July this year, and a gentleman spoke and talked about how the average commission across the country on list commission is 5.08, and in his expertise opinion, educated opinion, he thinks it's going to go down to 3.64 in the next seven years. Well, a lot of agents are freaking out. What am I going to do? Well, one of the ways you can fill the gap bridge the gap, if you will, is increase the average sale price of a home you represent. So you are on the right show if that's what you're looking to do. Again, my name is Michael Lafito. I'm your host. I'm the founder of the Luxury Listing Specials Certification for Agents. Check it out, LuxuryListingSpecials.com. If you have any questions about today's episode or you want to make some recommendations or you have questions, shoot us an email, Michael at MarketingLuxuryGroup.com. All right. Many of you talk about the importance and you've heard the importance of social media and of course there's Facebook and there's YouTube. Well today's topic we're going to be really focusing on Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. And I saw this uh this producing agent, he's he's with Compass. I was at the Inman conference this summer and he did an amazing job talking about what he's doing with Instagram as well as Instagram stories and the ad, and he's doing some really great things. And so I got Jason Cassidy here from Compass out in San Diego. Are you there, Jason? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Thank you. Okay, good. My my earbuds died out about five minutes ago, so I'm hoping this works. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I can hear you fine. I appreciate good. it. So so welcome, first off, and uh, you and I met. I saw you speak at the Inman conference, and I was so impressed that I, I, I was going to try to reach out to you afterwards, and then I ran into you in the hallway, and here we are today on our podcast. It was fate. It was fate. It was fate. So one of the things, so you, you're an agent, um, you, you, you're starting a team, and uh, in your market, you, you know, we were talking offline, you know, the average sale price in your market called around 550 ish in the San Diego market and and you're a little above 750 800 so far year to date so you know you're you're doing some really good things there but I uh, want to talk a little bit about Instagram and talk to us uh, first off the first few minutes on you know what's working what are you seeing some success with and then we'll go into kind of the 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 Instagram stories the swipe up ads yeah, for sure. I mean, I think you touched on it a little bit. I think that's probably the most underutilized marketing tactic that's out there right now. 
Um, and I know we're going to deep dive into it in just a second where I, uh, where I explain the logic and the, the, how to actually do it. But I think Instagram as a whole, um, it's a byproduct of me. It's my sixth year in the business. Um, you know, if you look at the, I don't know, the bell curve of how Instagram's grown, it's the last six years or so it's become, you know, probably the one number one or two uh, social network in, in the nation. So I've just kind of naturally grown with it. I wouldn't necessarily say I've done anything in the past year that's anything different. I've just been working with it for the last five or six years. Um, you know, just been an active user myself. I'm 33 years old here in San Diego. So um, I, I, when I think about marketing campaigns, I think about what would I use or where, how would I find me, right? I'm 33 years old, uh, newly married, um, all that type of jazz. Like I'm my perfect client. So where am I? And I spend a lot of time on Instagram. So I'm going to target there as well. So I've always had that as a cornerstone of my business um, since, since I've been in the business. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so so that's a good reminder, uh, again, for you listeners, again, even if you're not an Instagram person, your potential client might be. So, again, just a reminder, you are your brand online and offline. So if somebody goes to your YouTube, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, are they going to see some consistencies with your brand and your contact information? And so that's something that, to keep in mind. Um, so, all right. So, go ahead and share with me a little bit about uh, Instagram and, and 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 what are what are you seeing as far as yeah. what do you recommend as far as you know how many times people should post a week, a day, um, do's and don'ts, and and what are you seeing some success with before we go into the Instagram stories? Yeah, from a thirty thousand foot kind of macro overview, um, you know, I'm pretty sure. At, I don't know the exact demographic of your listener base, but I have to assume that everybody's heard of Instagram. Um, you know, for the most part, if this, if you don't have the app or you're not, you know, you're looking for what to post in your bio, these tactics might not be the best for you because this isn't Instagram 101 per se, right? So, I mean, for the most part, you download the app, you post on it, uh, you use the proper hashtags and things like that, and people can discover you. I want to, as we move forward in this thing, I want to kind of underlay that that's kind of like foundational. You can Google, you know, what to put in your bio and stuff like that. Um, sure. what, I'm, what I'm looking into doing is what I've started to utilize is the ad platform behind it and how to target and advertise the people that I want to be in front of, right? Similar to like, um, similar to like Facebook, right? You can, you can target yeah. people in a certain geographic area or you can target people by, you can't do by household income anymore, but um, you can basically tell Instagram where to show your ads and which type of people you want to get in front of. And, and the tactic works that way. So uh, how many times do I post? I wish I was a better, uh, I wish I could be a better advocate for that because it's really by cadence. I'm very much so like, don't post crappy stuff. You know what I mean? So if that's the case, like I don't, I'm not going to post every day just for the sake of posting every day, because then you're going to really dilute the brand of what you're trying to put out there. But what I'm trying to do is when I put something out, I want people to be really engaged with it. And in order for that to happen, I need to put out good content and there's no real, it's more of an art than it is a science, right? So yeah. um, I think real estate agents too much that, you know, we try to check the box of that I post on Instagram today. And then we put up a, you know, j- just sold, look at me type post, or we put up, hey, we're, we're doing an open house on Friday post, but that's, that's not really engaging um, very much, you know? So I always start to say that the foundation of what you're posting should be really creative. And, um, and but it's, there's no science behind it per se. I mean, there are a couple articles out there that posting, um, between 3 and 6 p.m. in the weekday is probably the best for engagement um, because you get people, you know, both checked out of work for the day or going home from work. You know, things like that, posting on a, uh, on a Friday morning at 8 a.m. is not going to do as good as maybe a Wednesday afternoon at 6. So there, there is some stuff out there. Um, I don't pay a heck of a lot of attention to it uh, when I'm posting. Okay, 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 good, good. Good, uh, good information. Um, yep. You know, you, you're getting a lot of traction, of course, on Instagram and some leads and that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, before we go into the Instagram stories, what percent of your posts are real estate related versus family, friends, uh, you know, uh, lifestyle type stuff? Uh, good question. And I, I've read in the past that you want to see 80, 20 or, or, or yada, yada, yada. I am actually, as we're talking, I just pulled mine up. So of my last 10 posts, all 10 are business related. And then I've got of the 10 previous, I've got a couple personals. 
So, like, yeah, I'd say maybe 90, 10, 80, 20. But the, the thing is, and what someone will notice if they jump on my Instagram, is even my business posts aren't self-promotionally, like, check me out, check out my new listing posts. It's, you know, something self-deprecating or funny that happened, um, you know, during the day where, so it's still an insight into my personal side, even though it's in the scope of business related. And I think that's a really, really, really fine line to kind of like to tread is that and self-deprecation helps a lot but like the bragging or showing off without bragging and showing off is a very very tough thing to do um but if you can master that you can you can have content for days whereas if you just post you know crappy open house announcements it's gonna it's gonna mute out really quick so i i would say i do about 80 20 uh business to personal but again, if you go back and you even look at some of my business, it's it's really it's more personalized than than most people's business would be. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And um, leverage. I'm a real big, you know, believer in leverage. I spoke at a conference recently, and they said leverage is a new hustle. I think it was a lab coat agents event uh, in June of yeah. this year. But but talk to that me was about in San leverage. Diego, yeah. Yeah, I was out in San Diego, Hotel yep. Coronado. Right, I can. I live downtown. I can see the Hotel Del from my uh, from my condo. Yeah, yeah, beautiful city. Um, so, so are you like when you're posting something? Are you leveraging it on multiple platforms? So, in other words, you post something on Facebook. Are you, you know, copying and pasting it to your Instagram and 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 then putting it into your stories and then you know trying to get more bang for your buck, more exposure. Um, t talk to me about if you're doing anything like that? And if so, what do you recommend? Yes, yes and no. So yes, in the sense that repurposing content is like a cornerstone content strategy. You know, you can take one long form piece of content. So in 2019, I've started vlogging. Um, about once a month, I'll have some, our videographer follow us around, me and my team, and then we'll go through a normal day in the life type thing. But throughout that day, I can repurpose that one vlog into 15 or 20 pieces of content for the next week or so, right? I can write... Uh, I can cut it into 15 second snippets for Instagram stories. I can put an Instagram post, yada, yada, yada. But I guess what I'm saying is like, I'm not a big believer of doing like the mass spread posts to all accounts. So like, sure. Like, I think like Hootsuite or there's different ways where you right. can like post it on one place and then it goes to all because yep. each, each, each social media network has its own language. And so, you know, some, some of them have character limits and things like that. So like, I use Twitter as well. And so when I'm on Twitter and I'm scrolling through and someone, and it's like, Hey, you know, check out this picture I took, but the link is to Instagram. And then you have to leave Twitter to go to Instagram to see it. Like it's just not a good user experience. And so I would much rather like when I post a video, I'll upload it natively to Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn and Twitter, like it natively to the platform. So while I may reuse content, I, I upload it natively to each platform. And then I, speak the language of that platform, if that makes sense. Yeah, and when you use the term natively, you, in, in the context you're, you're referencing, you manually put it in there. It's not pushed out by some service. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I don't use any okay. type of, like, buffer, later, Hootsuite, any, any of that type of stuff. Yep. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. All right, good. Good. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. All right. So the topic of discussion today that you, you're crushing it. I know offline we talked about you currently have a six million, a four million, a couple three million dollar listings, but your four million dollar listing. Uh, again, this is going to get everybody's attention right now. Your four million dollar listing you, you you got, you attracted that prospect through Instagram uh, swipe up ads, Instagram story swipe up ads, correct? Correct. Yep. All right. So let's talk about that. Uh, give everybody a brief overview of what they are and what the competition is and how it's been beneficial to you and, and do's and don'ts. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think Instagram story swipe up ads are the most underpriced marketing arbitrage out there right now, because we know that over a billion people use Instagram. And I know a lot of people say, well, it's just the kids, but that's not the case. 33% of their users are over 30 years old. And so just for a little bit of a preface to this entire thing, my client that, that, that we're about to talk about is in his 50s. 
So that being said, basically Instagram stories is like, it's kind of like the Snapchatty version of Instagram where you can watch like 15 second clips a little bit more raw than the Instagram feed is per se, but it, it, I like it a lot better. It gives like an insight behind the scenes type look. Um, and I get way more engagement on Instagram stories than I do on the Instagram feed because I feel like people, I feel more approachable, right? People can like reach out to me and DM me and, and that type of stuff. So Instagram rolled out an ad platform where you can sponsor an Instagram story. So I don't, again, if you're familiar with Instagram stories, if you're swiping through, every third person that you see or so there'll be a sponsored post it's an ad and so you can actually create one of those ads and so a lot of people are confusing I've, this is a tangent here but instagram story swipe up require uh 10 000 followers on your instagram account right but that's not necessarily what i'm talking about and so what i'm talking about is actually creating an ad through the facebook ads manager um as okay. if you would just like a normal facebook ad or whatever and then when you get to the placement section, you just unselect Facebook, Facebook Messenger, and Instagram feed, leaving only Instagram stories as the placement. And you just created an Instagram story sponsored post. Okay, very good. So, and those are a lot cheaper because there's less competition right now? Because there's less competition, yeah, because that's the thing is the agent, agents aren't there yet. Your competition's not there yet, but your clients are. So what I did was... I took kind of a, an old school take um, on the I have a buyer letters. So I, I did. Yep. I had a buyer that was looking in La Jolla, which is a affluent neighborhood here in San Diego. And they were looking for a single family home up to two and a quarter million. We had already seen everything on the MLS. And, it, you know, back in the day, I would have sent, I would have had my title company pull, you know, the, the title farm for La Jolla. And I would have sent out, you know, 250 or 300 letters or whatever it was that says, hey, um, homeowner, I have a buyer looking in your neighborhood. If you're thinking about selling, let me know. Call me. So what I did instead was I took my phone and I just recorded myself saying that. And I said, hey, La Jolla, what's up? It's Jason Cassidy with Compass. I have a buyer looking in your neighborhood. We've seen everything on the MLS. We're looking up to two and a quarter million. If you're thinking about selling or you know someone who is, swipe up into your information and let me know. And so basically, I just took that old school, I have a buyer letter, and I digitized it. And then I ran it as an Instagram stories ad to La Jolla. So now there's a little side note. You can't target by zip code anymore through Facebook, but there's hacks around that. So just pin that for just a second. Um, okay. And so I ran that to La Jolla for a hundred bucks. By the way, the old school, I have a buyer letter is if I would have sent, you know, those are 50 cents for your stamp alone, not to mention the time of handwriting the letter and the paper and all that type of stuff. But that would have been 50 cents per letter alone. So I was able to, to reach 2,000 plus uh, people through the Instagram stories for $100. So to reach mm. 2,000 people with the letters would have cost me like 500 or like $1,000 plus, you know? Right, so right. I was able to, to reach over 2,000 people. I had 22 people swipe up and two different people leave their address for me because they were thinking about selling their home. Neither of those homes worked for my client, but after three months of follow-up and there's another key there, you know, having someone and actually Follow following up. up with them for three months. Yep. Um, the client called me and said, Hey, we're thinking about selling. Can you come out and, you know, talk to us, went out, crushed the listing appointment, got the listing via an Instagram story swipe up ad, basically. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, I know some people are visual, um, but if you go to Instagram, of course you got the, the stories up top and then you have, as you scroll down, you know, you have, um, you know, the various posts. So wh where exactly are the Instagram swipe up ads? So they're in the stories up top, right? So basically, if you think about Instagram, if you're looking at your phone right now or whatever, and you think about Instagram as a T, so the feed scrolls up and down, like the, the up and down yep. part of the T, and then the stories are at the top, the crossbar of the T. Yep. So they go left to right. And it's those little circles that are up yep. there. And basically, everybody who has an Instagram account has the ability to post a story on there. And that's how you can watch other people's stories. And again, as a 33-year-old millennial, newly married, like that's my target demographic. I use that more than I, I scroll side to side more than up and down on Instagram. So I'm okay. always using that. So now that's, if you jump in there and you start to use that and you start to use the feed, every third post or so or every third person is a, is a sponsored post. And those are companies that are trying to target you because they have a captive audience and they, it, they can sell advertising space. 
there. And basically, you can do the same thing um, via the Facebook ad manager. Mm-hmm. Okay. So so you're more a left to right guy than an up and down. Now, will that ad right. appear in the, the stories, the left to right area, the top little circles? Yes, exactly. So when you when you watch it. Because I've story, never seen an ad there. That's why I'm, I don't believe I've ever not, seen an ad. So it doesn't it doesn't show up on the – so it's when you click it and you watch a story and then you just swipe through people's stories, every third story or so will be an ad. I got gotcha. you. So it doesn't I show gotcha. up in the user interface. It shows up when I you've gotcha. opened up the story. Yep. That okay. Thank you for clarification. All sure. right. No, that that that's really cool. Um and you mentioned money's in the follow up. That doesn't change if you're thirty three or forty three or however old you are or what industry, right? <laughs> the money is in like, the follow up. So Yeah, um, there's I mean there's certain underlying principles here that, you know, I guess you could say, Yes, I met that client via Instagram story swipe up ad. But I'm sure somewhere along the way, he vetted my website. You know, he was in my sure. CRM. I followed up with yes. him for three to six yes. months. And then I went to his house and I had the skill set to talk to him. And I had a really nice listing presentation. So, sure, there's a more that went into it. Absolutely. That, yeah, but I'm just talking but, about had Instagram story swipe up ads not worked, I would have never met this client and none of it would have mattered. Absolutely. So, you know, we cover one of our modules in our certification is called conversion system. So we talk about how to increase conversion, right? And so, so yes, certainly the opportunity was that you got was because of the ad. However, you converted that prospect to a client based on all the other things you just mentioned, right? It's not correct. You know, yep. So no, congratulations to you on that. And so again, you know, get this $4 million property sold and, you know, you'll attract more buyers and sellers with leveraging that as well. So leverage, leverage, leverage. So that, that was that was very insightful. So a little niche. You talked about this primarily during your, uh, your the conference, the Inman conference that you and I met with. Um, mm-hmm. Any any other uh, takeaways? You mentioned something about you can't select via zip code, but there's kind of a way that you can narrow down those 2,000 people that you appeared in front of for 100 bucks. How did you weed out or, or narrow down? Um, yeah, so I was able to, at that time, this was back in February, I think, or March, that I initially contacted or got, got to contact the client, me, or the client to contact me. So I was able to zip code target then, and that just changed like last month. I mean, this is a very yeah. recent change that Facebook took away zip code targeting. So, so what I would mean, you do today? Today, if you had I would just, that same answer. What you can do, you can drop a pin. So while you can't target by zip code, you can still, in your Facebook ads manager, create a custom audience. And then you can drop a pin on your location and then just narrow the radius down to as small as 15 miles. So now instead, and I would just drop a pin in the middle of La Jolla, drop the radius down to 15 miles. And then what I would say is like my content, instead of saying, hey, La Jolla, I have a buyer looking for blah, 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 I would say, hey, La Jolla and surrounding neighborhoods, I have a buyer looking for blah, 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 right? Yep. So I would just yep. change it up just a tad because now I'm overlapping into Del Mar and Pacific Beach or whatever. So I, and so I would just say it like that. Or I would say, hey, Del Mar, La Jolla and Pacific Beach, I have a buyer looking for blah, blah, blah. Yep. And what's the worst that can happen? You get someone from Del Mar that wants to, <laughs> that was thinking about selling their house? Like, mm-hmm. oh, darn. So your call to action in this ad was was swipe up and leave a comment? Swipe up and leave your address. Yeah, so I had him. So by doing that is through the Facebook Ads Manager, you can put a destination URL. And what that, what that does is it gives them the ability to swipe up, and then it takes them to your landing page. And so I just had a – I created like a little landing page on my website with a form where you can enter your address. Perfect. Yep. Well, very, 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 very good information. Uh, like what you're doing out there, Jason. Anybody has a referral in the San Diego marketplace? What's the best way for them to get a hold of you? I guess I would be remiss if I didn't say Instagram, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely reach out to me on Instagram. This is my name, Jason underscore Cassidy, C A S S I T Y. Um, or you can always, uh, you know, find me on, on Facebook as well. And, and my phone number is 619-800-6178. Um, that's my personal cell. So, so use it. Uh, you'll get directly to me, and I would love to talk to you. Awesome. Well, hey, really appreciate your time today. And, uh, again, if you guys have any questions for, for me or Jason or, or uh, just in general as far as 
our course or anything else, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup. If you haven't done so, check out luxuryspecialistgear.com. We just launched a new clothing line, and I, I landed a $2.65 million listing wearing one of our premier uh, T-shirts just saying luxury specialist. It's a great conversational starter. We just added some really cool new shirts or stuff for guys and for women and and long sleeve, short sleeve. Check it out, luxuryspecialsgear.com. Again, any questions for me about our certification, our products, shoot me a note, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Keep raising the bar. And remember, folks, it's not the market, it's the marketing. Continue to raise the bar and make somebody's day. My name is Michael Lafito. Until next time, this is Luxury Listing Specialist. Take care. Bye.